Let's suppose the augmented matrix for a linear system has been reduced by row operations to this row echelon form. Columns 1, 2, and 3 correspond to the variables x1, x2, and x3, and then this last column we assume corresponds to the constants in the linear system. From this information, we want to identify the pivot rows and the pivot columns and use the row echelon form to solve the system. Remember that the pivot rows are rows that contain leading ones. In this case, those are rows 1, 2, and 3. Each of these rows happens to contain a leading 1. Remember, a leading 1 is just a non-zero entry which occurs first in the row that is positive 1. Each leading 1 occurs in what's called a pivot position, and the columns containing those pivot positions are the pivot columns. Hence, columns 1, 2, and 3 are pivot columns. Column 4 is not a pivot column, since it doesn't contain a pivot position. It doesn't contain an entry with a leading 1. So those are our pivot rows. Those are our pivot columns. Now we'll solve the system. Row 1 leads to this equation, row 2 leads to this equation, and row 3 leads to this equation. When a matrix is in row echelon form, we use what's called the back substitution to finish solving the system. That's because we kind of proceed backwards. The last row is going to give us the immediate information about one variable. In this case, the x3 is equal to 4. And we can then use that to plug it into the previous equation, which corresponded to row 2. Since x3 equals 4, I can plug that in here to have that x2 minus 12 must equal negative 10. Since x2 minus 12 equals negative 10, we find that x2 equals positive 2. Now we can plug x3 equals 4 and x2 equals 2 into the equation which came from row 1. Thus, we have that x1 minus 2 plus 2 times 4 equals 5, and so x1 must equal negative 1. Again, notice we had minus x2 in that first equation, but x2 equals 2, so we have minus 2. We also have plus 2x3, but we know that x3 is 4, which is why we see that plus 2 times 4. Here's another example that's a bit harder. Let's begin by identifying the pivot rows. Those are the rows that contain the leading ones. We see a leading one there, a leading one there, and a leading one there. Hence, the pivot rows are rows 1, 2, and 3. Row 4 is not a pivot row because it doesn't contain a leading 1. As another non-example, notice that this is not a leading 1 because it's not the first non-zero entry in its row, whereas this is the leading 1. Again, the columns containing those leading 1s are the pivot columns, columns 1, 3, and 4 in this case. So those are our pivot rows and pivot columns. Now we can use each row to write a corresponding equation and solve the system using back substitution. Row 1 gives us this equation, row 2 gives us this equation, and row 3 gives us this equation. Pivot columns are important in this case because any column which isn't a pivot column and corresponds to a variable indicates a free variable. So for example, column 2 corresponds to the variable x2, but column 2 is not a pivot column. Hence, x2 must be a free variable. We could say the same thing about column 5 and its corresponding variable x5. It is a free variable, its column does not contain a leading one, it's not a pivot column. Since columns 2 and 5 are not pivot columns, and so their corresponding variables are free variables, we can set each of them equal to an arbitrary parameter. So let's say x2 equals s and x5 equals t. These parameters are free to take on whatever values they like. Hence, when we do solve this system, we'll have an infinite set of solutions described in terms of these parameters s and t. Again, we begin with the equation which comes from the last row. x4 plus 2x5 equals 1, but x5 equals the parameter t. So, subtracting 2x5 from both sides, we have that x4 equals 1 minus 2t. Then we can plug that into the preceding equation. x3 plus x4, well, let's replace x4 with 1 minus 2t, and plus 4x5, 
the x5 is t, so that's plus 4t, and this equals 5. Then we'll move everything except x3 over to the right side and thus solve for x3. 5 minus 1 is 4, and negative 2t plus 4t is positive 2t. Subtract that to the other side, and we have minus 2t. Now that we know what x2, x5, x4, and x3 are, we can plug all of that into equation 1 and solve for x1. Equation 1 has x1, and then plus 4x2, but we know that x2 is s, so that's plus 4s. And then minus 3x3, but we know x3 is 4 minus 2t, so minus 3 times 4 minus 2t. And then it has plus x5, and x5 is t, so that's plus t, and this whole thing is equal to negative 3. Again, we're going to move everything except x1 over to the right side. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12, and if we add that over to the other side, we have minus 3 plus 12, which is positive 9. We also have 4s, which moved to the other side is negative 4s, and we have negative 3 times negative 2t, which is positive 6t, plus t, which is positive 7t, subtracted to the other side, is minus 7t. Hence, x1 equals 9 minus 4s minus 7t. Now, we have every variable solved for in terms of the parameters s and t, and thus we can completely describe the infinite solution set. So any 5-tuple, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, with this form, is going to be a solution to the linear system whose augmented matrix was reduced to this row echelon form. Note that with this solution set, x2 and x5 as the free variables can be whatever they like, and then the other variables are calculated accordingly. So that's how to use row echelon form to identify pivot rows and pivot columns and to finish solving a linear system. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Adios.